Well, I want to talk to you just briefly today about that you might just get sick on the mission field. Depends on where you go. Uh, I was in uh, Querétaro, Mexico. The year was 1987. Uh, and uh, I was careful about drinking only purified water, which uh, uh, my friends drank, the Mexicans drank also. And I was careful about eating f food that had been well prepared. But still, I got sick. And you can do all you can do to miss being sick, and you'll still, you may still get sick. I have a friend in Burkina Faso that's had malaria so many times he quit counting, but he knows it's over 50 or 60 times. And so I want to warn you about getting sick. I had amoebas, and amoebas is a very scary thing because I'd heard tons of stories about it. I had diarrhea. I was passing blood literally by the cup full. I'd get up from the bathroom, and the toilet would be blood red, and I was, uh, I was very un uh, unnerved by it. And the pains in my stomach were killing me, and I felt disconnected and isolated because all of my friends who are back in America or a handful of people, but you don't want to talk about this sort of thing. Who are you going to talk to about this? And I can't go to a doctor because I don't know how to talk. I don't know what to do. Uh, I didn't talk to the Mexican friends. I've been drinking purified water and eating food that had been prepared with good sanitation. So how did I get sick? I don't know. But I, this is what happened. Um, I told Betty, I said, throw me in the back of that Suburban and just I'll lay there in the back while I die and you drive me to the border and you can dump me at an ER, an emergency room there in Texas. Well, the next day she went to language school and I had to stay home. There was literally no way I could leave. And while she was in language school, the sweet lady that taught uh, Spanish to us, her name was Alicia. She says uh, one day uh, to Betty that, that day in class, she said, where's Austin? And she said, oh, he's very, very sick. And uh, she said, well, what's wrong with him? And she said, well, he's got diarrhea and he's passing blood. Of course, we didn't know it was amoebas yet. And so... Uh, she said, no, my husband's a doctor, and I I'm going to send him over to your house. So Betty called on the phone, landline to landline, and back in those days, and Betty said, uh, the doctor will be at the house soon. Oh, I was like, oh, please don't. I, you know, I hadn't had a bath in two or three days, and, I mean, I was in bad shape. And so I said, okay, and I got up, and I took a shower real quickly, and I laid back down the bed. And I'm laying in the bed, and he, he, the lady who takes care of the kid uh, let him in. He comes up to my bedroom, and uh, I, I'm try, talking Spanish and trying to laugh and joke. And I looked at him. I said, what are you going to do to me? You're not going to be sticking any fingers anywhere in me, are you? And he just laughed and said, I'm not even going to touch you. He said, I just want you to tell me what you're feeling. And I told him I had fever. I told him I was passing blood. I told him I had constant diarrhea, and I had immense pain in my stomach. He said, oh, it's pretty obvious you have amoebas and your body trying to get rid of the amoebas has twisted your intestines. That's why you're bleeding. And that's where the fever's coming from. And he said, so I'm going to give you something for pain. I'm going to give you something to kill the amoebas. I'm going to give you something to, to uh, an antibiotic to help with the infection. And uh, you've lost quite a bit of blood, but it, within a, a day or two, you'll start feeling better, but you're going to be weak for a while. And uh, it was exactly like he said, medicine. I was back up and running. I was back in class in a couple of days. And all of my life was back on track, back on schedule. Uh, now, I'll, there, there are going to be plenty of other times my family is going to get sick over the next bunch of years. But I want you to know this. You can't let that stop you. You know, I had, uh, I had COVID and got this scar here in the United States, in the, like the most modern country in the world. Uh, you can't avoid sickness, but what you can do is get medical treatment. In almost every country, there's some good medical treatment, especially for diseases they're used to handling, which amoebas was something that they were quite accustomed to handling, quite accustomed to seeing. I say that so that you'll know not to let that fear rule your life. Uh, love, perfect love casts out fear. When you know that you can trust God, that he's going to take care of you, you can throw that fear away and trust God to meet your needs and work in your life. And I just want to challenge you, don't let fear keep you from doing that. Don't let your uh, crazy, weird fear of sickness keep you from doing some of the most exciting things in the world. 
as the missionary told me later on, if you don't ever have any wars or battles, you don't have any war stories to tell. If you don't get sick, if you don't have things stolen from you, bad stuff doesn't happen, no stories to tell. So really, it turned out to be a great story, and God took care of me, and God will take care of you. Don't let that hinder you. You go to the mission field and do what God's called you. Hope you enjoyed the little story. Give me a like if you did. Maybe subscribe or tell some other friends about it. God bless every one of you.